across America, the Food and Nutrition Service, under the USDA, administers several nutrition programs that provide healthy, balanced meals to children in schools. Because these programs receive federal assistance, all sponsors must comply with federal civil rights statutes, regulations, policies, and directives. In this training, we will discuss three compliance areas of civil rights and school nutrition programs public notification, racial and ethnic data collection, and disability compliance. Public notification. All programs receiving federal funds must have a public notification system. The purpose is to inform applicants, participants, and potentially eligible persons of the program availability and steps necessary for participation, program rights and responsibilities, the policy of non-discrimination, and the procedure for filing a complaint. School nutrition programs should focus on three areas of compliance with public notification, program availability, complaint information, and the non-discrimination statement. Program availability. Annually, programs must notify the public of participation in the school nutrition programs. The state agency sends out a statewide public release annually for existing schools participating in child nutrition programs. New schools to the school nutrition program must send a public release to notify the public. Changes in program benefits or services must be communicated to the public as well. Information should be offered in non-English languages as needed and alternative formats such as large print or braille as necessary. Be sure to convey the message of equal opportunity in all photographic or pictorial program information. Complaint Information Schools must display the And Justice for All poster in a prominent place at the service delivery point where it is visible to all participants of child nutrition programs. If the service delivery point is not in the cafeteria, then the poster must be displayed where the meals are served, such as in a classroom. Posters are not generally required in individual classrooms if participants will visit the cafeteria, whether for a meal or other activity, within the same facility during the day. Posters are not required on food carts. The poster provides the USDA address and phone numbers that the public can use to file a complaint if they think their civil rights have been violated. Version AD-475A is required for sponsors of the National School Lunch Program, Special Milk Program, and School Breakfast Program. Posters are available from the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Program upon request. The Non-Discrimination Statement this is the authorized USDA non-discrimination statement. Schools who participate in the school nutrition program and specifically mention in their promotional and informational materials or on their website that they participate in the school nutrition program must include this non-discrimination statement. At a minimum, the full USDA non-discrimination statement should be on all vital documents, which are documents that are critical to program participation, such as applications, complaint forms, and notices which impact benefits. These documents might include application forms, the notification of eligibility or ineligibility, the notice of adverse action form, the program web page. Note that the statement is not required to be included on every page of the program website. At a minimum, the full non-discrimination statement or a link to it must be included on the home page of the program information. Additionally, a link to the non-discrimination statement in other frequently encountered languages should also be included. And public information, including program literature, availability of services, and outreach. The short non-discrimination statement should rarely be used on program documents, and its use should be approved by the Regional Civil Rights Director. General informational materials such as a calendar, menus, or recipes would not need the non-discrimination statement. For information regarding appropriate use of the full or short non-discrimination statement, please contact your area consultant. When the size or configuration of an item would make it impractical for a statement to be used, it is not required. Examples include caps, buttons, magnets, and pens. Racial and Ethnic Data Collection 
Data collection and reporting is a civil rights directive that helps determine how effectively a program reaches potentially eligible children and where outreach may be needed to improve access. To comply, sponsors must establish a system to collect racial and ethnic data on potentially eligible populations, applicants, and participants in their program service area. Self-identification is the preferred method of collection and information must be protected from an unauthorized use. How to Collect Racial and Ethnic Data The purpose for collecting race and ethnicity information is to determine how effectively FNS programs are reaching potentially eligible persons and beneficiaries. Typically, race and ethnicity is requested at school enrollment. It's also requested on free and reduced price meal applications. Provision of this information is voluntary. Alternatively, staff must make a visual observation of ethnicity and race and inform the applicant that this visual identification will be recorded in the data system. Self-reported information is the preferred method. Children must not be surveyed. Applicants must be assured that the information is required for and used for statistical purposes only and has no effect on eligibility criteria. Information must be gathered with a two-part question that addresses ethnicity and race. The ethnicity categories include Hispanic or Latino and non-Hispanic or Latino. The race categories include American Indian or Alaskan Native, Asian, Black or African American, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, and white. Unlike ethnicity, applicants may select more than one race. When the information is collected from an electronic free and reduced price meal application, there must be an attestation that the racial and ethnic data collected was verified and submitted accurately. Agencies may have categories for race in addition to the ones required by FNS. However, the additional categories must be mapped and extracted to the required categories. Racial and ethnic data should be used to determine if a racial or ethnic group may be underrepresented in the school nutrition program. The data collected must be kept for three years in a secure and confidential manner. Disability Compliance Programs receiving federal assistance must ensure that persons with disabilities are provided an equal opportunity to participate in federally funded school nutrition programs. The two areas of focus are access and communication. Accessibility to the school nutrition program must be provided to all applicants, participants, and potential participants. Program access must be reviewed in the following areas. Physical access to the school nutrition program must be available to persons in wheelchairs and with mobility disabilities. Websites and online application systems must be accessible for persons with visual impairments and other disabilities. Effective communication through the provision of auxiliary aids and services must be provided to individuals who are deaf, hard of hearing, blind, or have other disabilities that require communication assistance. And reasonable modifications in the school meals program to accommodate individuals with disabilities, including allergies and those who may need assistance consuming their food. Effective communication. Communication with individuals with disabilities, including students, their families, and or guardians and companions, must be as effective as communication with others. Effective communication means that whatever is written or spoken must be as clear and understandable to people with disabilities as it is for people who do not have disabilities. Provision of communication assistance and auxiliary aids. Communication assistance and or auxiliary aids must be provided for individuals with speech, hearing, or vision disabilities. When choosing an aid or service, the Georgia Department of Education, SFAs, local agencies and sponsors are required to give primary consideration to the choice of aid or service requested by the person who has a communication disability. These entities must honor the person's choice. 
unless it can demonstrate that another equally effective means of communication is available or that the use of the means chosen would result in a fundamental alteration or an undue burden. Examples of common auxiliary aids and services include qualified sign language interpreters in person or through video remote interpreting services, written materials, real-time computer-aided transcription services, closed caption decoders, assistive listening devices and systems, audio recordings, brailled materials and displays, screen reader software, magnification software, and accessible electronic and information technology. Federally funded school nutrition programs must cover the cost of the auxiliary aid or service provided unless it can demonstrate that a particular aid or service would be an undue financial burden. The decision that a particular aid or service would result in an undue burden must be made at a high level, no lower than a department head, and must include a written statement of the reasons for reaching that conclusion. Even if a particular aid or service is found to be an undue financial burden, then effective communication must be provided using a different auxiliary aid or service. School nutrition funds may be used to pay for these services. The public must be notified that communication assistance, including the provision of auxiliary aids, is available free of charge and how to request these services. This information must be provided on any home web page containing school meals program information. Web-based free and reduced price meal applications must also be accessible to individuals with disabilities. The state of Georgia has adopted the Georgia Gov Accessible Platform, which was designed to reduce barriers to content for visitors with disabilities by implementing requirements that allow an inclusive, accessible online experience for users with assistive technology. If an SFA is requesting to offer a web-based free and reduced price meal application, it must be approved by the state agency, who will determine whether it is accessible to persons with disabilities. Special Dietary Needs of Students with Disabilities School nutrition programs must also meet the needs of children with disabilities and other medical conditions. Programs are required by law to meet the special nutrition needs of students with disabilities. Students with other medical or health concerns not based on disabilities may receive meal modifications. Programs are encouraged to accommodate special medical needs when possible. Specific guidance regarding modifications in the school meals program includes FNS's policy memorandum on modifications to accommodate disabilities in the school meals programs, September 27, 2016, and FNS's accommodating disabilities in the school meal programs guidance and question and answers, April 25, 2017. Service animals. Service animal means any dog that is individually trained to do work or perform tasks for the benefit of an individual with a disability, including a physical, sensory, psychiatric, intellectual, or other mental disability. The work or tasks performed by a service animal must be directly related to the individual's disability. In addition, a public entity shall make reasonable modifications in policies, practices, or procedures to permit the use of a miniature horse by an individual with a disability if the miniature horse has been individually trained to do work or perform tasks for the benefit of the individual with a disability. Covered entities are limited in the types of inquiries they may ask of an individual with disabilities about their service animal. They may ask if the service animal is required because of a disability and what work or task the service animal is trained to perform. Covered entities cannot ask about the person's disability, require medical documentation, require a special identification card or training documentation for the dog, or ask that the dog demonstrate its ability to perform the work or task. Covered entities may not deny access or refuse service to individuals with service animals because of allergies or fear of dogs. There are two conditions in which a person with a disability can be asked to remove his or her service animal from the premises. 
if the dog is out of control and the handler does not take effective action to control it, or if the dog is not housebroken. However, if either of these two conditions warrant the removal of a service animal, the covered entity must offer the person with a disability the opportunity to obtain FNS benefits and services without the animal's presence. In summary, this training has reviewed public notification, racial and ethnic data collection, effective communication rules, reasonable modifications in school nutrition programs, and service animals. Here's a list of must-dos from this training. Prominently display the And Justice for All poster. Make sure the non-discrimination statement is included on all printed and electronic materials available to the public that mention USDA and or the school nutrition program meals and snacks. Ensure that the non-discrimination statement is also included in frequently encountered languages other than English. Collect annual racial ethnic data information. Ensure that people with disabilities have an equal opportunity to participate in your program through access and communication and are notified of available communication services and auxiliary aids. If you need additional information about civil rights and school nutrition programs or links to civil rights documents, please contact the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Division.